Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going over our fourth winter forecast. We have lots of updates to go over. You guys have been begging me practically to make this video, so here it is. I'm going to be making it today. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, in your area, what is the earliest you've ever had an accumulating snowfall? So let me know your location, the date, and the year of that snowfall uh, that you had in your area, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. All right, now let's get into this video, and first things first, we're going to be taking a look at that above average precipitation region here, so we can see that it starts out on the Pacific Northwest, and it actually dips further and further south as you head eastward. It dips a lot further south than we originally had this one, so you can see by the east coast, if you were in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, you used to not be in this above average precipitation, but we're growing in our confidence that that La Nina is actually weakening more towards a neutral and so, which is usually uh, going to indicate more precipitation for the southeastern regions than at La Nina would, which is what we were expecting to be in, but it's looking a little bit weaker than we originally anticipated. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to move on and we're going to show you guys the moderately above average precipitation regions. We have two of those. Then we'll go over the below average precipitation. Then we'll get into the exciting temperature forecast, snowfall forecast, and the overall forecast. So stay tuned for all of those exciting features in this video. First things first, here's our first moderately above average precipitation region. And really, we're just a little bit more confident in the above average precipitation in this region. So from northern Oregon through Washington, portions of Idaho, western Montana, as well as portions there in Wyoming, down through northern Colorado, we're all expecting to have some moderately above average precipitation. It seems like the Rockies are going to have a really big winter this year, so really uh, look out. It's, I think it's going to be a really big winner for you guys. Uh, typically, those weak La Ninas, right where we're expected to be, you usually do see a lot of snow in those years. So we are expecting to have one of those winners this winter. So look out for that. Let's add our second moderately above average precipitation region. And as you can see, this one's a lot larger, actually, and it extends all the way from the upper Midwest down through some of the Great Plains, so some areas in Kansas, Missouri there, uh, even through the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes, and up into the northeastern United States and the New England states, where that also extends a lot further south than originally anticipated. So we're growing confidence in the East Coast, having a little bit more precipitation than we originally had anticipated. Throughout this entire video, I'm going to be kind of comparing it to what my previous forecasts were saying, just so I can update you guys on the new data that we're picking up on uh, in our new predictions. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to move on, and we're going to move on to that below average precipitation. And like I said before, we're going to get into that temperature forecast, snowfall forecast, and overall forecast in just a moment. So let's talk about that slightly below average precipitation for California, Nevada, portions of the southern four corner states there, and even then through Texas, we're expecting some slightly below average precipitation. It's going to be a little bit more dry this year, and that's very, very typical, especially along this, the west coast there for California to see below average precipitation in La Nina years, and that looks to be the case. Let's just go ahead and add that moderately below average precipitation region as well. And as you can see, that also extends in through portions of California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and even Texas. We're just a little bit extra confident, like I said before, in these moderate shades of those temperature, or sorry, those precipitation anomalies. So down there for the Southwest, we're really confident that we're going to have some drier conditions for California, especially, but also down through some other surrounding states as well. Let's just go ahead and move on and we're going to move right into that temperature forecast where now we're taking a look at the above average temperature region here. And as you can see, it's for a lot of the same areas that are expecting some more dry conditions like California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and even in through some of the deep south and southeast states. On the eastern side of this, this has actually been extended or I guess receded a lot further south here on the forecast and out west, it's actually been extended further north. We're a little bit more confident in a positive PDO. It was kind of a toss-up a little bit ago, a couple months ago, but it's become a lot more apparent that there is going to be some warmer than normal sea surface temperatures right offshore of California. And as you know, those, uh, those winds off of the ocean move right on shore to the west coast. So those temperatures are going to be directly influenced by how warm or cold the ocean is right offshore. And that's why we're gaining some confidence of some above average temperatures out 
west. Here's our moderately above average temperature region. And as you can see, this is just for California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. Again, where those warm ocean winds are going to move onshore and bring some warmer than normal temperatures at most points in time. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're just going to move on and we're going to move on and take a look at that very exciting below average temperature region. Eventually, we'll get into the snowfall forecast and overall forecast. All right, now here's that below average temperature region. And as you can see, we're starting things out with our slightly below average temperature region. And it extends from the Pacific Northwest down through the Rockies and through all of the plains there. So most of the central United States, even in through the eastern United States. And just like the above normal temperatures, this has been extended further north on that western edge and extended further south on that eastern edge for the same exact region reasons why we moved those above normal temperatures. Now let's start talking about the moderately below average temperatures here. And as you can see, this actually has not changed too much whatsoever here on our forecast. This is going to be for uh, the Rockies and basically eastward of there all the way until you reach the Ohio Valley. And it's going to cut off right before that because I think a lot of times this winter, we've seen this in the previous two winters actually quite frequently as well. We're going to have a trough that is a lot more centered over the central United States as opposed to the eastern United States. And a lot of times we might see some warmer temperatures try to reach up the east coast. That's going to leave it to where we're going to see more closer to normal conditions along the coast there. Uh, as opposed to further inland where we're going to have those more far below average temperatures. Uh, it will be mostly cold, I think, in the eastern United States along the coast as well. That's why you're still in the slightly below average temperatures, but there will be some times of warmth, obviously. All right, now here is our far below average temperature region. And as you can see, it really has not moved whatsoever as well, just like the moderately below average temperature region for Montana, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, portions of Michigan and portions of Illinois, including Chicago, all expect to have some far below normal temperatures there. Uh, this is unchanged and really in La Nina's, we actually have a higher tendency to see those troughs really dig into this region. Uh, so I'm just extra confident extra confident this year uh, that we're going to have those really far below average temperatures and really big Arctic invasions. We'll see that on the overall forecast at the end. Again, stay tuned for that very, very exciting stuff. What we're going to do here actually is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the snowfall forecast and then the overall forecast to close out the video. So stay tuned for that. Let's start out with our above average snowfall. And as you can see, we're expecting a good chance for above average snowfall throughout all of these light blue regions, basically the areas that are expecting more precipitation and below average temperatures. So all of the northern half of the United States, uh, especially the Rockies and the Pacific Northwest there as well as the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. As you can see, as we move on to our uh, more above average snowfall, this is the area that we're even more confident in. You can see that for the Pacific Northwest in through the Rockies, which again, I said we're expecting a really big winter there. Uh, we are expecting some moderately above average snowfall as well. Then there for the Ohio Valley, the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and in through New England, we're all expecting that moderately above average snowfall. I expect Miller B Nor'easters to be really possible this year. That's what we had a lot of in 2014 to 2015. That's what's going to bring a lot of that snowfall to New England if we do see that take place. Uh, if not, you can really... Um, it's really going to lower the chances at above average snowfall. I do think that will be the case though. And then here's our below average snowfall. And I know a lot of these regions don't even see snowfall at all, but the only things we're taking into account here is the temperature forecast and the precipitation forecast. So all of these areas in the below average snowfall region have below average precipitation and above average temperatures. So those areas are all included here, even though most of these regions do not expect snowfall whatsoever. All right. Let's move on to that overall forecast and a lot has changed here. So I'm just going to work my way from west to east. As you can see for the Pacific Northwest, we see cold and stormy. That has not changed. Mountain snow obviously hasn't changed at all as well because we're going to see mountain snow no matter what the winter's like. Although I do ex expect a lot of it this year. I've said that multiple times throughout the video and that's one of the things I'm the most confident in this winter. To the south of there, hot and dry uh, for the for the southwest region of the United States, you saw above average temperatures, below average precipitation. It's going to be really hot and really dry. Uh, and to the east of that, we see warmer for the south central, but not really that far above normal. It should be a pretty good winter for you guys. To the north of there, we actually have a pretty deep blue region. That's our cold and snowy region. Although it's not really going to be particularly cold compared to normal, it's still going to be cold and snowy. That's, you know, really typical. 
Uh, and to the north of there, we see Arctic invasions for this purple region. So for portions of Wyoming and through Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan, we're all expecting Arctic invasions to be possible throughout the winter. And to the north of there, polar vortex. Again, in La Niña's, we see that a little bit more frequently than in other types of winter. So really, I feel pretty confident that we could see a lot of cold air enter the north central United States this year. That's usually one of the more prominent things in La Niña winters. We can see there for the turquoise region, we're going to be expecting actually a lot of active lakes this year. They're very warm right now. Uh, we've seen kind of a warmer summer there as well as an earlier fall. So they're going to be above normal uh, temperatures there in the lakes. That's going to lead to above average lake effect snow usually. Um, so that's just something we're looking at this year. Winter battle zone there in the pink region there. Uh, really, that just means you could see cold, warm, snow, icy mix, rain. You're going to see it all. It's going to be sloppy. It's going to be gross. I live in this region, so I'm not just, you know, telling you all you're going to have a terrible winter. It's even me I'm talking about. So um, that's just, it's going to be the case. It's going to be pretty sloppy uh, and not any really true snowstorms very likely. To the south of there, still stormy, although you're not expecting the above average precipitation. I do expect a few big storms down there for the southeast. In that white region for a lot of the uh, mid-Atlantic in the southern New England states, more snow than the previous two winters. I just wanted to add that because no matter how this winter goes, uh, we've had historically terrible winters the past two winters. Either way, you're going to have more snow and more cold than those two winters. Uh, it would be absolutely incredible if we had three winners like that. So the, the likelihood of that happening are overwhelmingly uh, very unlikely. So, uh, and then inland of there, we see the worst of winter is expected further inland this winter. I see Ohio, uh, very far western Pennsylvania and upstate New York, very far western New York. I think if I had to pick anywhere that would have the worst of winter, it's those regions. But even the surrounding regions should have a very uh, snowy winter as well. All of those red regions uh, included. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Let's get into the uh, comment of the day. And I asked you guys, what's going to happen with the second disturbance we have in the Caribbean right now? And Av Cali said, I predict the second disturbance might take a similar track to what Wilma did back in 2005. And before you freak out, he only said, he or she only said a similar track, not intensity. And I do see that the track would be quite similar, but nowhere near the intensity at all. Uh, anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for su supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Mad Bird, Cindy Klein, Dan Hazard, Mark J, alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes, and Larry LaPan. If you'd like to support the channel in a similar way, you can check out our Patreon in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.